Hello all, welcome to the Lobster's Voyage. In this video, let's walk through the pit map and the presumptive organ formation in case of the frog. So in this video, we shall discuss about the pit map construction, basic mechanism of pit map construction in case of frog embryo and also which part of the embryo develops into what organ in the later stages of the development. Basically, frog belongs to amphibia that is adopted for the dual mode of life. It lives both in land also in case of water. Most of the times it lives on the, uh, on the land and just for the process of reproduction it visits the water where it deposits the water and the fertilization happens externally. Therefore, the development is indirect that in involves the larval stages and the developmental various developmental patterns. Now looking into the egg type of the uh, frog, it is telolysical egg that is it contains moderate quantity of yolk and yolk distribution is not equal, it is unequal or ununiform way of yolk distribution and most of the yolk content is distributed towards the vegetal pole of the egg, that is towards the lower base of the egg, therefore it is called as telolysical egg. Now egg in case of frog is not covered by calcareous shell, instead it is translucent, that is semi-transparent and when it is present in the water medium, it is almost impossible for anybody to identify its existence in the water. Therefore, when we are about to construct the fate map, it is important for us to understand and apply the technique, uh, artificial technique to understand the fate maps in case of frog embryo. Before you watch this video, kindly watch the basic introduction to the fate map construction whose link is described in the description below. The fate map construction in case of frog embryo involves an artificial technique called as VOGT which was developed in the year 1925 and for the first time the fate map construction of the frog happened in the year 1929. So almost like, uh, like approximately 80, 60 years, 80, 90 years ago for the first time fate map of the frog was constructed. So look now let us look into the basic mechanism behind the construction of the fate maps. When the frog undergoes uh, like external fertilization where the egg meets with the sperm, zygote is formed. Now the zygote is ready for the process of cleavage where the holoblastic cleavage takes place and the first two divisions gives equal form of the cells, later divisions gives the unequal form of egg and this unequal uh, cell formation is due to the improper or uneven distribution of the egg. So, when you look at the blastula stage of the frog, where it has already undergone the process of the cleavage, we are clearly able to distinguish two major regions. One region that is lighter in color, other region that is darker in color. The upper region that is present towards the animal pole, it has got moderate or low content of the yolk, whereas the region that is present towards the vegetal pole, it is pretty darker in uh, appearance and it is thickly yolk laden cells. And each segment or each part or each cell in the, in the blastula, it is called as blastomere. When the frog egg in, is in the stage of blastula, we apply a technique, artificial staining technique called as boat or VOGT technique wherein four natural dyes that is Nile blue, neutral red, Bismarck brown and Janus green stains are mixed with agar and these mixed agar is finally coated on the embryo. When you coat the agar on the embryo, when you allow it to uh, move for a calculated amount of time, the uh, dyes that are mixed with the agar penetrate into each blastomere of the blastula. Construction of the fate maps after blastula stage becomes little difficult and the most appropriate stage for the construction of the fate maps in case of frog is the late blastula stage or it is of, or the early gastrular stage wherein we mix with the natural dyes with agar and it is finely coated and after coating allow the embryo to develop naturally or allow for the morphogenetic movements or the cellular movement to happen. Once it is set, 
once the technique is applied and once when the morphogenetic movement is observed basically three major areas are distinguished or they are formed one the presumptive ectoderm forming area the second one presenting meto mesoderm forming area and third one presumptive endoderm forming area so when you apply both artificial technique on the fate, uh, on the egg of the frog for the fate map construction after the morphogenetic movement or the internal cellular movement we are able to distinguish three major reasons regions one presumptive ectoderm mesoderm and the endoderm once the morphogenetic movement is completed and we get to plot fate map of the frog and we all know that fate map is basically a graphical representation of the embryonic stages of the development of any embryo and once the uh, migration or the morphogenetic movement completes the cells from various regions of the uh, of the developing blastula migrate into specific location and those locations have, have been given different different names and they are the one that forms the dermal regions in the later stages of the development they are the ectoderm possible mesoderm and the endoderm uh, this is the ventral view of the fate map of the frog which shows ectoderm differentiated mesoderm and differentiated endoderm which is uh, darkly stained or it which is darker due to excess of yolk deposition similarly the dorsal view of the fate map of the frog shows distinct regions out of which the first possible region is the epidermis the second one is called as neuroectoderm third one mesodermal region and the last one the dense region that is called as endoderm so the mesoderm ectoderm and the endoderm in the later stages of the development are the one that helps in origination of the organ the organ might be brain development the organ might be heart the organ system might be circulatory system the organ system might be digestive system any possible system now looking into the presumptive organ forming regions of the uh, uh, frog embryo now when you look at this particular fate map and focusing on the point of ectoderm ectoderm is further differentiated into the epiderm that derives or that gives the integumentary system that is skin and the outer covering in the later later stages of the development also it forms neural ectoderm which initiates or which is the major source of the formation of the nervous system in the coming uh, time or the coming uh, period similarly mesoderm is further differentiated into three sub locations one of which one of which forms the blood and the circulatory system along with the kidney for the process of the filtration of the blood other part of which forms the major system or the supporting system of the body that is notochord and the middle portion which is darkly stained with the brown color bismuth brown that forms the somite so this is the location that initiates the process of the formation of the somites and the endoderm which is thickly laid by the yolk content that gives rise to the gut region both mid gut and the hind gut and the yolk content in the endoderm will help for the formation of all these organs in the later stages of the development and the uh, and uh, right, right from the dorsal region to the ventral region uh, uh, along the endoderm there is something called as cauda mesoderm region this cauda mesoderm is the location where the notochord origination begins so from this fate map we can clearly under, understand that by the application of the vogt technique or vogt uh, staining technique uh, we will be able to track the morphogenetic movement and once the morphogenetic movement has been tracked the dermal differentiation is easily studied and as and when you track the movement of these particular uh, dermal regions they give rise to various systems in the body like the notochord somites circulatory system kidney gonads blood integumentary system and the skin and nervous system also the gut region from that is originating from the endoderm without the application of vogt technique or without the application of the fade map techniques on the frog it is impossible for anybody to understand the morphogenetic movement and map the presumptive organ forming regions of the frog embryo i hope you guys have understood this particular content if yes kindly like share and spread the knowledge see you again
Cheers.